If you want to know how to cut t-shirts, how to cut jeans, how to cut sweaters, how to cut anything and how to cut it straight, then this is the video for you. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. I am excited as always. This is the second video in our series of basic upcycling skills. The things that you need to know to get upcycling at a level that is beyond, definitely beyond what I started at. And today we're talking about the most basic thing in upcycling and that's cutting. We're gonna use a couple of projects that I have had to the side and haven't gotten a chance to do. I know, like I sew all the time, but simple cutting, I just put them to the side and I like never get to them, but I'm super excited to do these with you. And at the end, of course, there's three projects we're gonna style them. I love styling, so we're gonna include that as well. So let's do it. All right, I'm sure your question is what scissors can I use and the answer to that is it depends on what type of cut you want a nice straight cut that's what we're gonna focus on first because in sewing and upcycling that's the one we do the most here I have a college t-shirt that I thrifted the other day and I just want it cropped the number one thing that most people want to do with t-shirts and jeans. They wanna crop them or with jeans, cut them off into shorts. And I take it for granted because in my mind, it's just like, well, you cut them, but knowing how to cut properly is a very important skill. So the first thing, whether it's fabric, whether it's t-shirt, no matter what it is, you wanna lay it out flat, as flat as possible first, no wrinkles, no nothing because if you have wrinkles then your cut will not be as straight if you need to iron it that way go ahead and iron it that way the next thing you can do is you can draw a straight line i tried this shirt on and i marked how far i want to cut it if you are unsure if you're afraid always cut lower than your cut and then you can always try it on and then get closer to where you think you want to cut it because once it's cut that's it so i'm just going to mark this seven inches from the bottom in a couple of places yes the hem is a little bit jagged but we'll at least have a really straight line so if you are afraid that you can't cut straight draw straight use a ruler anything that has a straight edge all right so once you have that straight line you're going to get your scissors now what type of scissors should you use? I have a bunch of different types of scissors and we're gonna focus on just scissors right now. You can use any scissor that has not been used to cut paper. I have this brand new pair of scissors that cost $5 at Walmart and it says right here, layers of fabric, layers of paper or felt. However, it's very important to know that once you cut paper, it's not going to be as effective cutting fabric. So these are my $5 paper scissors. I keep them just for paper. They're exact same scissor. This one is for my paper. This one is for fabric. So of course you can get more expensive fabric scissors. These are the LDH scissors that I really love. Um, they cut through layers and layers of fabric. And then this is a $10 pair from Walmart. And then this is a $20 pair from Amazon. I'll put the links to all of these in the description box. I also have a $1 pair. These were 97 cents. They do not say that they cut fabric on the outside, but I'm going to try these as well just to see. So when you're cutting, this is what you want to do in order to cut a straight line. We already have a guide, so we're winning. But what we want to do, you wanna make sure that when you make your cut, the first cut, when you put the scissor forward, you put the edge of the scissor, the cutting edge of the scissor, right where the end of the cut is. A lot of people just get to cutting and you know it gets real jagged. You see, it's going straight. Of course, you might, you know, have some little mistakes, but we're gonna do our best. And we're gonna keep going. So we have a really straight line. Now let's do some tests. Let me show you what I meant by a jagged line. So you can see that my scissors started to go this way, that way, this way, that way, because I wasn't trying to keep a very controlled line. Still not bad, but that's what happens. And now we have all of these little jagged edges. And depending on the fabric, it can get really worse. You definitely want to pay attention to that. These are the paper scissors. I'll cut with these so you can see the difference. Still pretty good, but the more they've been cut with paper, the less they'll work on fabric. Still pretty good, so celebrating $5 scissors. Now let's try my expensive scissors. 
and that cut is absolutely perfect. So there's not a whole lot of difference, but it's just about your technique, mostly. The difference between the price and these two scissors is about $45, and they cut really, really good. This one, it's just bad technique, that's all. Still not horrible. And we almost forgot to test the 97 cent pair of scissors. Oh, these are light. Okay, let's see if when they're new, will they cut fabric? All right, so that does not give me a clean cut. Just because I'm used to cutting fabric as I went along, I used only the back part of the scissors and that was able to help me to do it a little bit better. But the more cuts you have to take, the more likely you're gonna get some jagged edges. So when you have really long scissors like this, that helps you to make a cleaner cut because you can cut longer, you know? So don't get the 97 cent scissors, go for the $5 ones. All right, so let's talk about denim. When you are getting ready to either crop your jeans, turn them into shorts, um, it's really important that you know the grain, how the grain is running in your denim. And you wanna try to cut kind of perpendicular to that grain. It's just gonna help it to fray better. And it doesn't matter. It absolutely doesn't matter what type of scissors you use, whether you use expensive or cheap. And as a matter of fact, if you use your oldest scissors, like oldest scissors possible that have cut paper and stuff, sometimes it will help the jeans to fray better. They'll fray as you cut, if that makes sense. Because like those old scissors are kind of like tearing through the fibers. But the hard part about them is that they're going to have a hard time going through a lot of layers. I'll show you here. So once you get them through that, then you can go ahead and just once again, we have a nice straight cut. We went a little bit awry over there. But then you're going to throw those in the washing machine and let them fray. I'll show you with the expensive scissors. That's a straighter cut. And then you'll put them in the washing machine, let them fray. You can physically pull out these threads if you like to get it started, but just let the washing machine do a lot of the work for you. Now, if you want a lot of fray, then yes, you do have to start to pull that out. But if you just want it to be finished on the ends, throw it in the washing machine, it's finished. And I have these jeans here that I have been wanting to turn into those Margiela $560 side slit or thigh slit jeans. If you're interested in doing those jeans, go to your local thrift store, find a nice vintage pair of jeans. It shouldn't have a whole lot of stretch. Gloria Vanderbilt is pretty good about that. So I have my pin over here, how high I want my cuts on the side. And I'm just gonna let you guys see me do this project because it fits the bill about just cutting. So once again, we're gonna lay them as flat as possible and we're just gonna cut right here. And I have my pin right here and I think I'm just gonna cut to right here. Mark there. If you are uncomfortable about going through all four of these layers at one time, I can just go through this one. Okay, I'm not gonna quite go all the way there. I'm gonna lift that layer and then do the bottom. Just because more can go wrong, the more layers you're trying to cut through. So now both of these are absolutely cut at the same place and I can go throw them in the washing machine and they're gonna be absolutely perfect. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? This is a whole series in addition to our spring up cycles that we're working on, our kind of capsule wardrobe. So we got two series going on at the same time and they're actually co-mingling because some of the pieces I create for this series are gonna go into the spring wardrobe. So it's just amazing and you don't wanna miss it. Hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. Let's talk about other types of cutting tools. Right here, I have two rotary cutters. This one is a really cheap one. This is a little bit more expensive one. I got this one from the fabric store, it's an Ofa, and this is Fisher's from Walmart. Between the two, I don't think it really matters a whole heck of a lot, except that you always have to make sure that your blade is sharp when you're cutting fabric. So make sure you have plenty of blades. And if you're cutting with metal, please, please make sure that your blade doesn't hit that metal because 
it's it's over and then there's also something called pinking shears so look at the blades on that you'll see that they go back and forth like a razor edge and these are used in fabric cutting in order to keep the edges of your fabric from fraying so this is a non-sewing non-chemical solution to helping your edges not fray That's what'll happen if you've hit that metal. That's what'll happen. Jagged edges. And these are really old and really dull, but you would do the same thing when cutting with these. Wherever you stop, you try to go right there so that way you'll try to have a continuous edge but that just keeps your edge even though it is going to fray it keeps it from going up and messing up your seam all right now how do we cut sweaters sweaters are pretty much the same thing if all you want to do is cut a straight cut then you just go ahead and cut that like you normally would anything else except that if you are going to finish the edge try using masking tape to attach it to wherever you're gonna cut and then that way it won't move the only problem with that is that it combines then it's gonna combine the cutting of paper and like some sticky substance with your scissors now that can be hard so then you might want to cut them with an old pair of scissors that's why i only put it right here so we can go through that with my paper scissors the rest we're gonna attempt i just put a new blade in the rotary cutter so we're gonna see if that makes any difference oh yeah that made a big difference because it's a new blade i'm not gonna go through that part we'll get our paper scissors since they're still pretty good and we'll go through that part the same thing, the same way. You wanna get through all of the layers, keep that edge right where you cut before. And then that way, that edge is being held by the tape. So that if you're gonna go and take that to the serger and serger, whatever you're gonna do, or if you wanna use fray check, you can go ahead and add the fray check to the edge and it's still nice and crisp. All right, we're gonna finish this off. Optimally, you want one cut, because once you start going backwards, then you can cut other things that you didn't mean to cut. That's the importance of a really, really sharp edge. We have this fabric we could do something else with. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do with it. And I'm actually going to curve this, because I want that, that type of cropped sweater. All right, and I want my edges like really raw and ragged. So once again, I could go and put this in the washing machine and just let it do its thing, or I can just kind of rough it up myself. And that's it. All right, so now that we're all on the same page, we know how to cut, we know we don't need super expensive scissors, we're gonna get to cutting. And once we do that, I wanna see you guys style it as well. If you're interested in joining my Facebook group, we share our upcycles as well as like how we style them. It's just super exciting, so definitely check that out below. And I am going to style these pieces for you right now. First up, let's do the t-shirt. I love a good crop tee. Like you can't go wrong with a good crop tee. And if you know how to do it, you can just always crop them. And this same method, if you wanna cut off the collar, the same thing, lay it on a flat surface and go ahead and cut like that. You'll get great cuts every time, hands down. All right, so now let's see the jeans. Yeah. 
yes, 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 yes. I am so glad I did these. I'm so glad I did these. I saw them and I've been seeing so many people style them and I, I really, really like them. And I love the fact that when you make them, you could put the cut however high or low you want it to be, however deep you want it to be, however you want it to be. Just how you like. That's, that's what it's all about. So I am definitely digging these. All right, last up is the sweater. Yes, I've been wanting one of these sweaters for so long and I every time I see one, I'm just like, I, I don't feel a need to buy it, but I haven't made it. And I'm so glad I finally was able to do it, like raw him or no him. Just, I've washed it. I know that's gonna be you guys' question. I've washed it and I wanted the kind of raw look, not the finished look. And that's exactly what I got. I really, really like it. I've been thinking of other ways to style it as well. So I'm super excited about this. Let me know in the comments if you felt like this video was helpful and also which of the looks you like the best, which upcycle you like the best. Definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications because there's so much more to come and I have other videos for you to watch right here. And I'm gonna put this series in a playlist so you don't miss a thing. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.